Lyndon Hill in Kent is the venue for the second round of the BMW Mini Rallycross Championship. We had plenty of action last time out at Silverstone with David Bell, the man to beat. Here though, Drew Bellaby is in charge with being fastest in two of the three qualifying runs. The other top time going the way of David Bell. And that means we're in for some great action through the semi-finals that are about to get underway. Semi-final one puts Drew Bellaby on pole position, Bradley Durdin and Martin Hawks along on the front row too. Christoph Kozom and Dave Ward on the second row of the grid. And then Stratis Hatsin Stefanis at the back of the six-car grid. Four qualify. Lights in a moment. We'll go green. We go racing. And a good start made from the outside of the front row by Martin Hawks, the 2017 champion, the runner-up last year. He will go for the Joker right at the very start to get that out of the way. Dave Ward, sports car and touring car engineer, as well as circuit racer, turned rally crosser, also jokers. He goes through in what's going to turn out to be fifth place because those joker drivers now get back onto the loose and you see how much time they lose straight away against the race leader, Drew Bellaby, who heads up the hill for the first time now. Sister Page, one of the leading lights in Super Nationals. Dad Dave, a winner in Super Nationals last year. We've seen him in supercars in the past. Game on for second place, though, as look, Bradley Durdin squeezes up on the inside. Christoph Kozon tries to fight back as they come down towards Paddock. There is just about the width of a mini, but Kozon unable to go through. New roof on the car, new colour scheme on the roof at least. It looked all rather battle scarred at Silverstone. Bradley Durdin second, bouncing his way then across that loose section of circuit back towards Tarmac. Durdin skipped Silverstone, so he needs points this weekend. He makes his way up across the loose, but going strongly up front is Drew Bellamy. Fastest in two of the three qualifying runs and leading this semi-final and getting away. Looking very strong indeed, no question about it. There goes Kozon through in third place for the moment, but remember, when everybody else serves the joker, the order may well shuffle again. Bradley Durdin making his way then in that second place out of the hairpin. And now once more down towards Paddock. Let's see whether or not here there's going to be a chance for Christoph Kozol to get a little bit nearer. They flick out of Paddock. They go briefly to Tarmac, back to the loose. But no question about the fact that the race leader is getting away. Drew Bellaby that came out of a junior rallycross, second in 2014, runner-up again in 2015, moved to the Swifts, then into the BMW Minis. Championship runner-up two years ago to Martin Hawks, fourth last year in a very competitive season and looking very pacey indeed right now. Bradley Durdin in second place, dropping back a little bit though now. Up through the hairpin he turns. And now the cars plunge downhill once again. They're heading towards that right at Paddock, but Bellaby is away and gone, even allowing for the Joker. It will be very unlikely now if she were to lose that race lead. Through in third place goes Christoph Kozom. Started off in Clubman's Rallycross with both the Citra and Saxo, and then a Mini, now into the Mini Championship itself, and getting quicker and quicker each time out. There he is, through Chesson's Drift. We've had one or two running really wide there this weekend, where it gets slippery and sliding out towards the barrier. No such dramas for him, though. Bellaby leading and looking as though she's going to save that joker to the very end of the race. Build up the gap, build up the advantage, and then you have that joker lap in hand. Up now towards the right-hander of the hairpin. Runs a little bit wide out of the corner, but no problems whatsoever. Drew Bellaby accelerates downhill. You see the extra curbing put in now to give the drivers a bit more width to play with and also stop them hooking a wheel into the dirt and the grass verge on the outside of the road. So the cars now flick through Paddock once more up towards the timing line. There is Kozon in third place, not able to stay with Durdin, who in turn can't really do much about Bellamy. That's his Stefanis there at the back of the pack, looking as though he's going to miss the cut. So Drew Bellamy on target now, it seems, for honours in semi-final one. Bradley Durdin going through in second spot. And Christoph Kozon close, but no cigar. Martin Hawks is going to be fourth. So those that jokered at the very start, now trying to gain places back, but it looks like they're going to run out of time. There is Martin Hawks, plunges down the hill, heads towards Paddock, but Drew Bellaby looking oh so strong up front. There is Dave Ward with a bit of damage on the front right corner of the car. Drew Bellaby takes the joker. Bradley Durdin does likewise, and there in third spot, look, is Christoph Kozon. 
Now, where do they all feed back in? Is this where Martin Hawks is going to gain ground on the Joker lap? Let's see. He's got past one, has he? He's got past two, in fact, because Hawks is up past Bradley Durden as well. And Dave Ward now comes up to challenge. So it seems as though doing the Joker at the start was a good move, but Ward goes deep into the Devil's Elbow and runs out wide. Just about gets away with that. Powers up the hill, but he will lose momentum and therefore lose the opportunity to have a go back at Bradley Durden as a consequence. So Drew Bellaby is heading for the race win. There she is, through Paddock, chequered flag awaits, and Drew Bellaby is going to win this semi-final for the BMW Minis. Second will go the way of Martin Hawks, jumping ahead of Bradley Durden on the Joker. So to confirm the results of semi-final one, Drew Bellaby the winner, Martin Hawks second, Bradley Durden is third, and Dave Ward, the final qualifier in fourth place. Semi-final two about to get underway here. The reigning champion David Bell is on pole position. Steve Brown with him at the front. Then Gareth Wood ran across returnee. James Osborne in one of the Bell Motorsport cars on the second row with Andrew Hawks for company. So five start, four qualify. Lights go green and it's blast off. Who makes the best start? Often pole position is not ideal here because you're on the dirt brought back from the loose to the tarmac coming out of paddock. And there with the air-conditioned car is Andy Hawks. Now, why is the door a flapping? Is that because someone didn't close it properly on the dummy grid or has the catch failed? Either way, that's not going to help life as he turns his way now from the Joker back to the normal lap. It is David Bell that leads the way and Steve Brown is doing the chasing as they head uphill then for the first time. Steve Brown in the car run by the Bellaby team comes then now out of the hairpin on the back of David Bell, the Silverstone round winner, plunges downhill up front. James Osborne running in third, a relative newcomer to Rally Cross. The motorsport engineering student came into the category midway through 2018 and he gets faster and faster all the time. So there is Bell and Osborne plus Dave Ward we saw in semi-final one, all run by the Bell Motorsport team. There, Osborne goes for the joker. Across the loose section comes then this battle. But David Bell, just for the moment, keeping at bay Steve Brown. And Brown is somebody else that's going to be well worth watching this season, which is building up to be very competitive indeed, because he is showing better pace here than he did at Silverstone. And he's right there on the tail of the champion. Further back, James Osborne now looks for a way past Andy Hawks. He's lost out on the Joker because Hawks' look has got through. Gareth Wood, I think, has also managed to gain ground here. So, out of the hairpin they come. The pressure now is on James Osborne to see whether he can find a way by. Don't forget, only one of the five starters will miss the cut to go into the final. So, right now, this is a very important battle. Andy Hawks just ahead of Osborne. We saw Andy's brother, Martin, in the first semi-final. Andy, who came from Swifts into Min, he's still looking for his maiden win, in fact, in the championship, but he's always been a stalwart racer within it, and he's got James Osborne almost in the back of the car, so close was he going into Chesson's Drift. Osborne has knocked the wipers on, as meantime, David Bell leads the pack up the hill once again. Hawks up the kerb, he's got Osborne breathing down his neck, wipers on still, heading up towards the hairpin, is there going to be a gap on the inside, maybe, for Osborne to take advantage of? Let's see, he closes right up there through the hairpin and now head downhill once more. Race leaders come briefly to the tarmac and for the joker lap this time goes Steve Brown. He will joker then to get that out of the way. How much ground is he going to lose? Let's see. One, two, three is Steve Brown. He was in second place. He slides his way back to Chesson's Drift. Now heading towards the Dover Slope with the target still being David Bell. Now he will of course drop back but he's got a clear road ahead of him so he can push, push, push is that going to help on the Joker when the race leader serves it? Let's see. Meantime, for the last place in the final, it is still Andy Hawks just keeping at bay James Osborne here. Up the hill they head once again. And if anything, that gap is just widening a fraction, is it not? Turn through the hairpin and then make the run downhill once more. Hawks just extending that advantage. Osborne doing his best to stay in touch, but to no avail. Down to Paddock they come now, but there the race leader, David Bell, goes for the joker lap, the longer lap. Let's see whether he's going to be able to keep the race lead. The Bell Rally Cross team run car, airborne over the jump, and it will indeed come out in front. So David Bell is still ahead of Steve Brown. They come across the loose, they're heading back towards the tarmac, 
and Brown is running out of time, running out of options here. He's going to qualify for the final, which is the main thing, but he's not going to be a race winner unless disaster strikes David Bell. Bell to the hairpin, turns his way through the corner. Steve Brown, probably about as far back now as he was before the Joker, so he's not lost any ground out of all of this, but David Bell looking very strong indeed. The reigning champion, the Silverstone winner, comes through Paddock. He will flick onto the tarmac once more. Onto the last lap now. In fact, he goes onto the loose at Chessons, still being chased by Steve Brown behind him. Bell to Brown. The gap is down a little, maybe, as they come off the loose, but David Bell is doing enough to hang on to that race advantage. He comes out of the devil's elbow and he makes the run now up the hill. Brake hard, turn right. Bell careful not to let the car run too far wide, but he does use all of the available width of the road, so that maintains the momentum in these supercharged engine minis, it's essential. Down towards Paddock, Steve Brown looking for a good grid position now for the final, but up to the chequered flag they will come, and David Bell does indeed win semi-final two for the BMW minis. Second across the line is Steve Brown, and then the last qualifier is Andy Hawks, but James Osborne is going to throw everything at this, up towards the flag, Hawks up the kerb, just hangs on to that fourth place. So semi-final two won by David Bell, Steve Brown is second from Gareth Wood, Andy Hawks fourth, and poor James Osborne is the one who misses out. The final for the BMW Mini Rallycross Championship is good to go. Drew Bellaby starting on pole, David Bell for company, and then Steve Brown on the outside of row one. It's Martin Hawks and Brad Durden on row two, then Gareth Wood, Dave Ward, and Andy Hawks on the third row of the grid. Drew Bellaby has looked so good all day. The lights go green. Not a great start, though. Loss of traction. Slithers off the line a little bit. Bogs down as a consequence. Goes for the normal route as those that joker include Brad Durden, also Steve Brown, and Andy Hawks. So those are the three that take the slower lap straight away. Meantime, Drew Bellaby out dragged by David Bell. This now not what she needed, and it puts the pressure on. Other drivers have been saying all day that the middle of the front row is the better place to be. It's a bit grippier, and it also gives you the freedom of choosing whether to joker or not. Well, here, Drew Bellaby has got the pace, but the cork in the bottle, as it were, is David Bell. He is not going to give up this race lead without a real fight. Martin Hawks is third as they come off the hairpin. Downhill now. Into Paddock they turn, Hawks under attack there, Dave Ward is fourth, going really strongly here, but it's his teammate David Bell that leads as they come across the loose, onto the tarmac, end of lap one of six, down towards Chesson's Drift, does anybody joker out of that leading gaggle? No, not this time. Across the loose at Chesson's they come, on board with Bellaby, still pushing as hard as possible here to try to get back onto terms with the race leader David Bell, Hawks running in third place and it's Dave Ward fourth now. They break for the Devil's Elbow, turn through that sharp left, and then this very steep climb up towards the hairpin. Ward on the back of Hawks, looks for the outside line. He came out of one make circuit racing, so this a familiar environment in a sense, apart from the mixed surface element to it, but Dave Ward getting better and better each time out, fighting now for third place against a former champion. Into Paddock they come, Ward turns right, across that loose surface he goes, but up front it's David Bell versus Drew Bellaby. And Bell, although he's got the advantage, he's not charging away up the road. Bell will be doing her best to keep him in sight here. There to the joker lap goes 612 Gareth Wood, turning through that right-hander. So the longer, the slower line. Return to the sport last year, former supercar, super national racer Gareth Wood. But now going rally crossing at a lower cost, but with no less intensity in the racing, that is for sure. Lead gap is down again. Look as they make the climb up Harry Hill. Bell just ahead, breaks hard for the hairpin, Bellaby catching right up there. Now can she get a good run out of the hairpin? Well she can, but the trouble is so can David Bell, so she doesn't gain anything out of all of that. Down to Paddock now, down through the gears, turn right, Bell slides a little bit, but he gets the clipping point for the corner okay. Another lap in the book, and this time Bellaby will go for the joker. Can she gain any time here? Push, 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 but don't make a mistake, break hard, turn sharp right flick left, right again, over that jump, crash lands back down to earth, across the loose at Chessons, grab a gear, 
onto the tarmac briefly and then hard on the brakes down towards the devil's elbow. Turn left, head uphill. Brad Durden in the meantime is keeping at bay Martin Hawks. These two running together and of course the order continues to shuffle around. The gaps open and close depending on who jokers when. Bit of understeer from Durden, even more understeer from Hawks which forces him out wide and now he is in danger of losing a place, not quite. Marty Hawks just hangs onto it as they drop downhill. Steve Brown had a good look there but he couldn't find a way by. The leaders skip their way back onto the tarmac as there is David Bell throwing everything at this look goes through that joker lap. Heading now back towards the tarmac section and Drew Bellaby is ahead on the joker lap. Drew Bellaby goes through now. So Drew Bellaby leads at Lydon. It is David Bell second and everybody else trying to be third. Durdin, Hawks, then Ward, then Brown sixth. Up the hill they come. But Drew Bellaby on the Jokers has got the race lead. Absolutely crucial as Dave Ward elbows his way up the inside of Martin Hawks and they come to grief. No change in the order. Dave Ward went for a gap that was almost mini-sized. Maybe the old shape mini-sized more than these cars sized. But it didn't work for him. And there, understeering out wide is David Bell and that cost him even more time. One lap to go. Drew Bellaby leads and he's getting away. Onto the loose through Chesler's Drift now. All sideways. Is that a mistake? Let's see. The car is still sideways and it's off the road. Is something broken? Drew Bellaby off the road. She's lost the lead. She's lost second. What triggered that? She seemed to be going okay. Onto the loose at Chesler's Drift and then suddenly the car got all sideways. She's still on the grass limping back towards the track. So Drew Bellaby's dream win has gone. David Bell is only just ahead of Bradley Durden. He's got the lead, but he's also got a load of pressure, courtesy of going really wide last time at Paddock. So David Bell looks like he's going to make it two from two, and there is a distraught Drew Bellamy. It may well be a suspension breakage at the back of the car, looking at how it sat. So Drew Bellamy out of the race, and David Bell on the last lap wins here at Lyndon. Second goes the way of Brad Durden, and it's Martin Hawks third from Dave Ward. Cruel luck for Drew Bellaby then, retiring from the lead on the last lap, giving the win to David Bell. Brad Durd in second from Martin Hawks, and Dave Ward a best yet fourth. It's Steve Brown for fifth, Gareth Wood sixth, and Andy Hawks the other finisher. So David Bell starts to pull away in the championship, but it's Martin Hawks up to second at the expense of Drew Bellaby. Andrew Hawks fourth as we head next to Pembroke.